My name is Vera Falos Lorel. I was born in Budapest, Hungary, 1937, December. My uncle gave my mother the money to take me to this exclusive school that was for Christian children. And I was only there two days, and somebody in that uh, place told the Germans or the Hungarians that Jewish kids are there. That night we went to sleep. These two brother and sister teenagers, the Christians, they got us up middle of the night and sneaked us out of the place. And they put me into a Red Cross place. There was no food there. There was no really anybody to take care of us. There was a lot of lies. So they came and they cut our hair. And next door there was some kind of a factory that they had children's clothes, boys' clothes. So they gave us uh, clothes so we all looked like boys with uh, no hair. Meantime, my mother was looking for me because the war was over. And anyway, she came to this place. And when my mother opened the door, I right away I recognized her and I said, Mommy, Mommy. And she looked at me and she says, oh, poor boy, I'm, I'm looking for a girl. And I, I got so scared and I said, I'm a girl. I just cut my hair, I'm sorry. And she, she really took her a long time and she was holding me and she was asking me all these questions about my aunts and uncles and because she couldn't believe it, it's me. And then I, I answered everything I, I remembered. And uh, then she took me home. I was born in a Jewish state called Tochenwald. And I was born 1937. We were hidden in a cellar that my mother had dug for us to hide. Then later on, people were coming in and said, you have to, you know, you have to go to the ghetto, get everything out and go to the ghetto. So we all got into the main street. There was only one street in Tochenbord. There were soldiers on both sides with dogs and guns. And whenever they seen anybody that was sort of struggling or limping along, they just shoot them. Mother grabbed hold of me and we kept on going, going over bodies. My grandfather sent word he escaped to the forest. So we were sort of meandering back to the back of the property and then climbed under a fence and just kept on going through the forest. We had to move, my grandfather moved us every, every week or two weeks. We had to move to another place, build, you know, dig another hole in the ground. And, and covered up. And every time we had to move, I was crying. So then the next time I was crying, he hung me, grandfather, on a tree. When somebody in the woods is crying, you can hear for a long distance. And then my mother broke away, got me down. She said, the only reason we're alive is because I'm alive. Yeah, I'm a glick glick kid. I don't think my story is very interesting, but it is my story. My name is David Gamache, and I was born in 1938. I have a few memories of uh, my father and I. In 1941, he was asked to come to the police for a quick check-in. And my mother didn't want him to go, and my father said, I have nothing to, to hide. So he took me to the precinct, and he was kept there. Uh, my mother decided in 1942 that it was the time to leave Paris, and it was not safe. So someone said, I'll help you. He said, uh, take this barge along the river and I will take your son with me and we will be reunited after the border crossing. He was known 
to have saved many Jews like this trying to cross the border. My mother searched for a refuge for me. She must have proposed uh, some money of, uh, for the people to, to keep me. The woman was very Christian. Her husband was a German prisoner. She could not have any child. And uh, she said I was cute. And the thing I remember is they told me, don't pee in front of strangers because they will see that you are circumcised and um, it could bring suspicion to the whole adventure. And in 45, a cousin came to pick me up from this uh, nice family and uh, brought me back to Paris. I was born in Zagreb, Yugoslavia. Uh, August 10, 1934. My given name was Lyubomir Pechi, but everybody called me Lyubo. Being a young kid, I heard the buzzing of the airplanes and I ran out to the balcony and I looked up and there were these swarms of airplanes flying up in the air and I was fascinated because I, I loved, of course, as a kid, I loved airplanes. <laughs> and there were the real things going. The laws were gradually increased. We had to wear a sign on, when we went out with the letter J, which meant Zhidov, which meant Jew. And my father showed up with two of those signs. And I said, where is my sign? I want a sign. My parents found out that you could go to Italy and in Italy you could be interned, or what they call internati di guerra, which means uh, you're interned because of the war. Jews were not allowed to travel, so they actually decided they'll convert to Catholic so that they could make that trip. They had a difficult decision to make, but they decided I would be safer with my aunt who lived in a small provincial town where actually my mother was born and grew up. And so I uh, lived with them for like two years um, as a Catholic boy. I knew what I was, but I, I, I knew that I wasn't supposed to say anything. My parents were not allowed to travel, so they actually asked this priest to pick me up. He brought me to Treviso, where I finally joined my parents. I'm Ina Felser. I was born in Berlin, Germany, of Polish Jewish parents who moved to Berlin. I must have been about seven or eight, and I had gotten a pair of skates, and my father promised that he would teach me when the winter came. Well, you know, about a month after that, he was arrested and then taken away. So I've never learned to skate to this day. My mother and I were told to get out by July 1st of 1939. At the last possible minute, somebody managed to get me onto a children's transport. So she took me to the station in Berlin, and a group of us young people went to Hamburg to catch a boat to England. And I went to a Jewish family in Leeds, which is in the north of England. And then when the war broke out, which was shortly after I arrived in England, I arrived at the beginning of July or an end of June, they were worried that uh, Leeds, which is quite a large city, might be bombed. So they evacuated all the children from that school and our teacher, and we went to some little village uh, in the southeast of England. Uh, altogether, I lost 11 members of my immediate family. I can't really say I suffered terribly. I did miss my parents, and I was very disappointed because I had expected to see them after the war. Mm -hmm. 
only in America could somebody like me without any connections end up working for the governor of the state of New York. A lot of good people that helped me and a lot of luck. I never thought about a message other than you have to, to live and you have to find ways to survive because if you give up, it's not going to happen. Uh, my mother would not give up, my grandfather would not give up. I lived a very um, happy life, eating and uh, enjoying myself, and I have uh, good memories of that time. My family is very close, and I think it's because of me, because they know my story, and they, I, they know that uh, the only way to survive is be, uh, having a family, strong family, and, and lots of love. Thank you.